Let's see what you were. Walaikum salam. So today we have it's twenty seven, I believe, right? May June four two. Okay, let's do that. All right. All right, so all right, so describe the motion of the bus between uh, each bus stop, select the appropriate, um, the appropriate description from the list below. So from A to B, the speed is like, you know, reducing. So I mean, speed is increasing, acceleration is decreasing. So we are going to write decreasing acceleration between B to C. B to C, it's a, uh, moving forwards at constant speed. And from C to D, it will be, it is basically uh, moving backwards at one no. It is basically constant deceleration from C to D, but there's no option for it. Why? It says constant acceleration. So I guess it would be negative. So I guess that would be the appropriate one. All right. Now, then it says the average speed of bus between A and D is 23. Calculate the distance A and D. All right, A and D. Calculate the distance. So basically, you have time and uh, every speed is equal to total distance over total time. So 23 times, uh, this is in minutes, right? So two minute, what? It's two minute, okay. So two minutes, I will change into hours. 
because I want to find it in kilometers. And this will then be, let's see, 23 times 2 divided by 60. That is 0 0.77 kilometers. I guess that's not fair. That's fair. Right. Hey, you want to multiply this 2 into 60? Why? Why would, why would we multiply? Two, it's two minutes, so you would just convert into hours, right? Okay, then going to the next one. The bus stops at D for one minute, then travels at constant acceleration for 30 seconds. Okay, bus stops D at D for one minute. One minute means like this. And then it travels constant acceleration for 30 seconds. Sketch a possible graph for additional motion. Uh, graph X with we start to accelerate and label Y. Sketch a graph, label X when the bus starts X and label Y 30 seconds later. So for 30 seconds, it will be somewhere here, right? And it doesn't say like, you have the average speed, right? So in 30 seconds, if we, you know, just go through the same way. So it should go to, But there's no distance to. Okay. So I think for 30 seconds, you can just draw a straight line graph like this. Label it X, label it Y. I don't think so there is uh, any complexity here. So they will be expecting this. All right, now let's go to the next question. It says calculate the change in moment of water ejected in six. So 80 kg of water is it, uh, emitted six seconds velocity of this. So momentum final would be 0 0.80 times 0 0.70. Initial momentum would be zero because water was stationary, right? So the change would be 0 0.567 Newton second. So that should be the answer. All right, you please check if, uh, you know, sometimes I make mistakes as well. So you guys need to be aware of it. All right, then going forward, calculate the magnetic force. So force is change in momentum over time, 6.0. Okay, so that is 0 0.095 newtons. So that should be the answer. If you have anything to ask, please do. All right. Now, then the brakes are model released. Uh, Stain explain the direction acceleration model. If it throws water in the front, so the water will oppose the motion back.
All right. So statement is that it will go backward because okay. And the explanation for this is that water is pushed forward, so water exerts equal force onto model backwards. Okay. In the model contains water tank, which is initially full. Stay and explain any change in the magnitude of the acceleration breaks first release and when the tank is empty. Okay, so first, first of all, I would like to tell you that uh, there will be less acceleration when tank is full. The reason behind this is that More mass means greater inertia, all right? So inertia is basically the resistance to change, right, of motion. So we can also, you know, write about second law. So according to Newton second law, F equals to ma, Greater mass requires greater acceleration. Is it clear, everybody? Where for the statement I wrote that when the tank will be empty, there will be less inertia, is it right? Less inertia. Yeah. Uh, in the what? Sorry. When the tank is empty, there will be less inertia. In less inertia because there's less mass. So then you can, you know, with little yeah. acceleration, you can gain the same force, right? Like this. Wrong or right? Right, right. Okay. That's right. State the main form of energy transform sun to solar uh, generation of electrical energy. Right. Light. You know? Then uh, Consider the generation of electrical energy by large number of solar cells. State one environmental and one disadvantage. Environmental is that it is uh, produces uh, no air pollution, right? That's something. And disadvantage is it is uh, very, very, um, say, use of land is. Uh, discouraged right because uh, because you can't use it for farming you can't use it to put plants or anything now you put plates also it is very difficult i mean you have to put like um, you have to uh, it's expensive to manufacture as well state and explain whether it's uh, this source of electric energy is renewable it is renewable as we always get light from the sun. So it doesn't use anything, right? Just converts it. So a group of solar panels, uh, uh, okay. So you got 260 watt in one square meter. Square meter means square meter square.
Okay. And the electrical output of each solar cell is 2.5 ampere for additional difference is calculate the efficiency. So first we we'll look for the output. Output energy is V I and T. And the time. Did they give us the time? Okay, so we can use power only. So power, output power. So this will be 2.5 times 86, 215 watt. And let's see how much our solar panels are gaining. So our area for solar panels is 1.2 times. That's 3.36, right? And the solar cells are situated with 260 watt of solar energy per square meter. So if 260 watt, is in one meter square, then how many watts will be in 336, 3.36 meters square? So just multiply 260 times 3.36, 873.6 watts, right? So now this is the input, and the efficiency will be 215 output over input. Multiply by 100%. So this is about 25% like that, right? Okay, now going to the next one. State and explain to the molecules any change in the pressure of gas when the volume is reduced at constant temperature. Yes. So pressure and volume are inversely proportional. So pressure increases. Right. And this is because the number of collisions with wall of container. Walls of container increases as the the uh, volume or in the right space is less now, less now, and speed is same because they did not change the temperature. Right, that's why. Now. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can mention that it is a Boyle's law. You can write what? It's a Boyle's law. Uh, you can't give that explanation. You have to explain what is Boyle's law then. Okay. That's not fair, right? Okay. Then, uh, expands most gas, expands the solid. So, that's how it is. A liquid is heated so that the bubbles of the vapor rise to surface and molecules ex escape to atmosphere. State the name of process. That is evaporation or boiling. A liquid is heated so bubble of vapor rise to surface and molecules. Okay, so this is boiling. Because uh, the boiling happens throughout the liquid, right? Evaporation on the, only on the surface. At lower temperature than this, molecules escape surface. So this is evaporation. Okay. Now it says the metal block has a mass of 2.7 kg. The metal block has specific heat capacity. In two minutes, the temperature rises from this. Calculate the power of the heater. So Q equals to MC delta T. Mass here is 2.7. This is 900. Change in temperature is 39 minus 21. So we can find the energy. So this is 43740 joules. And then to find power, we want energy over joules. Or energy over time. Time was, how much time? Two minutes. Two minutes is uh, 120 seconds, 120 and 30, 150 seconds. So to change it, please do remember that. They're very clever, you know. 
the trick cube. So this is two nine two volt, right? Now it says state and explain the precaution that could improve the accuracy. Precaution is that you should put insulation. There is no insulation, see, right? There is no insulation right here. Heat would escape, right? Without insulation, there would be greater energy loss. Like that. Energy loss. Okay. Then comes this one, state the name of process that occurs, refraction, right? Now it says, suggest the cause of change of change in speed. Right, you can also write that, as you can see that the wavelength is smaller here, wavelength is larger, so change in speed, uh, speed in B, is higher than A because I can see that this is like shallow. Okay, then transverse wave. On figure, draw a wave which has half the amplitude and greater frequency. Half amplitude would be somewhere here. Greater frequency would mean that we can make two waves instead of one, right? and shorter size like this. Okay, uh, a train travels along steel. Uh, a person waiting at train station hears the sound of train through rails before he hears the sound of, explain why this happens. Okay, speed is faster in solids than liquids, oh, then gas, which is air, right? You could write that. The speed of sound in rails is this. Calculate the wavelengths. V is equal to F lambda. And lambda. I think this is a easy exam. I think. 5.3 meters. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Then, yes. For C, first part, can we mention the numbers? Like in steel, the is five thousand to six thousand meters per second. Yeah, you could do that. Okay. Okay. And then converting lens, it did complete the path of rays object. Now, how do you how do you complete it? Right. The ray that goes here, right? This is a converging lens, by the way. If you don't know or you've forgotten, that is not nice. So you will take your ruler, make a straight line like this. And then from this straight line, you will basically, this ray also like this straight line, exactly like this, okay? Now, then they uh, must bend because it will bend somewhere. So you draw a line on the screen because this is a converging lens. So it will converge them at a point like this. So because it says you have to make a sharp image on object two, it means both rays must converge here. And then you make arrows. Okay, please do make arrows. Then it says the converging lens is replaced by a thinner converging lens. And screen remains the same position. Uh, the thinner converging has a longer focal length, which means it is farther behind. Complete the paths. So now they would not meet. So you just make one ray like this. Then you make another ray like this. And then like this. And then like this. So they would not meet. They would meet further away, but not on the screen. Now it says, uh, describe the position of object in relation. The, uh, the converging lens is used to use as magnifying glass. The focal length of the lens is 10. Describe the position of object in relation to the lens. Whenever I've, I've actually written this uh, too, and I want to tell you 
that in case of you know uh, magnifying glass the object must be placed before f so we would write object is less than 10 cm from glass do you guys understand sorry from lens so that has to be there name the position of image in relation to lens and object so image will be like of course the ray will go here then f then like this so image will be way beyond it like this but of image that will magnify it right so the image will be on the on the same side as object and it would actually be farther away, further away. Okay, give three properties of image. Uh, you should, by now you should remember this. Number one, it is virtual, it is upright, it is magnified. All right. Okay, then conducting space mounted on insulating stand. Explain how would you use a positively charged rod of insulating material to charge the space by induction? Okay, so basically, rule one bring charge rod closer to closer to the sphere then what you do earth sphere on other side then what you do remove earth first then remove rod so that these are the four steps you should follow okay now it says shows an electrical component state the component LED light emitting diode. I think if you even write LED, right? Especially in all levels, it's fine. And space below. And it says write down the two table for NAND gates. Okay. So NAND gate is like this. Is the Han here? Achha, okay. So X, Y, say X, Y, and Z. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So it will be exactly opposite of and. So it will be like this. Okay. So you have to learn this, by the way by heart and now this question so d is the intermediate point so a and b is a or gate a or b if it is zero and zero it will give you zero if it is zero and one it will give you one 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 because this is an or gate output of now c and d are and gate so one and zero with zero one and one will be one 1 and 0, 0, 1 and 1 will be 1. So 0, 1, 0, 1 should be the answers to this, right? Okay. Then describe how the demagnetized bar using alternating current. Now, step by step, I'm telling you place magnet inside the solenoid. Okay, wait a second, please. You need to do something. Yeah. All right, uh, give me just one second, okay? I will be back. <laughs>
Okay, never mind. All right, so place a magnet inside solenoid. Then what you do? Okay, then. Uh, keep the AC current switched on and then slowly, slowly uh, pull the magnet out. Then here we have a DC motor. Explain the uh, purpose of splittering commutator. So the main purpose is to keep the coil. So right. So it says uh, keep the coil uh, rotating. in the same direction and then with the three marks by switching the direction of current when <laughs> after every half turn so that's what it does okay so that's you should write now, voltage of power supply is increased at the effect of motor. It will rotate faster. All right. Now, this one calculate the combined resistance of lamp and two resistors. Combined resistance. So, this is in parallel. It will be 1 upon 2, 0 0.2, sorry, plus 1 upon 0 0.3 equals to 1 upon R. So you can use the calculator. Generally, I do it. If you want to, that's fine. Sometimes it is very hard to take LCM, you know. Okay, this is 8.3, 1 divided by answer. So you have to take reciprocal as well. So R would be 0 0.12 ohms. Now these two are in series with this. So the total resistance would be 0 0.12 plus 0 0.20. So it will be 0 0.32 ohms. Now the potential difference PD of supply is increased. So the current in the lamp increases. Can you explain any change in the resistance of the lamp? Okay. Uh, naturally, if you increase the current in a filament lamp, its resistance will increase. And explanation is that resistance increases as temperature increases. Due to increase in current. Like that. Okay, so make sure your answer is logical. And then here, uh, array on 222, nucleus contains 86 protons, 136. It decays by emitting an alpha particle and becomes a nucleus of an isotope polonium. The symbol of radon is Rn and polonium. Write down this equation. Radon goes to polonium and gives alpha particle. Alpha is 42, as you know. It has 86 protons, but surprisingly, it says it has 136 neutrons. So 136 plus 86 would be its total mass, 222. Two, two. This means that polonium will have 218. To confirm, you can just subtract four from it and uh, 84 like this. So you got the equation, yay. Then what you do next is, um, Carbon-14 is a radioactive isotope of 5,700 half-life. The animal bone is dug up in an archaeological excavation. 
the quantity of uh, carbon 14 in the bone is 25% of what it was what it was when bone was buried, buried. okay so calculate the time that will elapse since we buried okay we could do that now let's uh, let's say let's say quantity when it was buried was x let's suppose it is x right so quantity now is 25% of x which is basically 0.25x right so now the question is that how many times it has been halved so if i half x once so it will be 50 if i half it another time it will be 0.25x do you understand so how many have half x are there so two half lives passed like that so if one half life is equal to 5700 years then two half lives will be 5700 times 2 so that is going to be 11400 years is it clear everybody any questions so how do you know there are two half lives i got i just solved it let's suppose i said it was suppose that when it was Buried, it had X amount of carbon fourteen, right? Yeah. So when you half now, it's it says the time has passed, and now we only find found twenty five percent of it. If I multiply it by half, what will be the answer? Zero point five X, right? Yeah. If I multiply by half again, so you after another half. X as one. You, right? huh? you predicted X as one. X is just X or one. Yeah, you could put it one. You could put it anything. Okay. You understand? So it means twenty five percent is when you half the original value twice. This would give you twenty five percent of the original value. Now, I got to know there were two half lives. So one half life is this. So two half lives will be multiplied by two. Understood. Okay. Cool, right? Okay. That's the end of it. Yay. All right. So I guess 